shake your head, have some fun Forget our mothers and boss of us, forget everyone Oh, I'm so lucky You were my best friend Oh, there's no one, there's no one knows me song man that, that's that lift in it you know you're listening to a you know great song it has that lift it gives you that that kind of a, it's like a freeze or a kind of chill right when you listen to it and it just it's like wow what a great what a great song man wolf alice from london england i believe from manchester I don't, i'm not even sure somewhere in england a uh, fantastic band little wolf alice that's a live take from 2016 on the NPR uh, Little Desk. So, Marcus Conte reporting. We're going to uh, talk about talk about Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders grew uh, half a ball. Well, let's give him a half a ball. Out of the possible two full balls that he could have, could have grown, Bernie Sanders gets a half a ball on this one for pushing back on Hillary Clinton, calling him a Russian agent on the Howard Stern show. So, uh... Let's dive in. So billionaire, this is just a quick meme. Billionaire donors. This is how many, just for the record, how many billionaire donors does Joe Biden have? 44. Pete Buttigieg, 39. Elizabeth Warren, 6. Bernie Sanders, 0. Billionaires are not interested in Bernie Sanders. I wonder why. I wonder I wonder why that is. You know what I mean? That's very revealing right there. The guy with the least uh, appeal... The least appeal to the people, Joe Biden, has the most billionaires. And the guy with the most appeal has no billionaires. Eh, Just food for thought. (laughs) Oh, shit. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. The fucking witch flew in the window. So I found, let's re-listen to the clip. I'll play the clip of Bernie Sanders pushing back on an Iowa newspaper uh, report. I don't know. He was sitting down with the Iowa newspaper people. And he pushes back, and then, well, um, but this is the actual statement. I found it. Howard Stern finally put it up. This is the uh, the actual live interaction when Howard Stern, when Hillary Clinton throws Bernie Sanders under the bus. So let's listen to it one more time, and then we'll go into Bernie Sanders' rebuttal. Doesn't it upset you that that um, even your fellow Democrats, like when someone's, like you, you said something the other day, I never rule out running again mm-hmm. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Fine, well, who cares? Yeah. They're angry. They don't want you to run again. They well, don't want you to, you know, everyone's pissed off at you. Well, this is very revealing because if she is the appointed one, if the Democrats lose all respect for dignity and decency and fair free elections, and they actually are going to try to overturn the the uh, people's, you know, selection, even if, because they've diluted the float so much that nobody could get the 50%, therefore... In the second round at the DNC, the superdelegates and the, and the insiders can come in and pick a candidate. It doesn't even have to be one of the uh, other, it doesn't even have to be one of the candidates that ran. That's how sick the fucking Democratic Party is. And you see how she shrugs it off. Oh, well, I don't know. No, I, I you know. So it isn't, it isn't ruled out. Are the Democrats so broken and so don't give a shit about the people that they they just it's it's uh, unsalvageable. It's almost like it's almost like going back to uh, Abraham Lincoln. You know, the, the Republican Party, the the first Republican was Abraham Lincoln, and uh, he ran um, his his selection. His I, I believe his election to the presidency dissolved the Whig Party because it used to be Whigs and Democrats, and then when when uh, Abraham Lincoln ran in, in the 18 whatevers, uh, he be, he dissolved the Whig Party. <clears throat> Maybe that's what could happen with the Democrats, because that's all you could really hope for.
So anyway, she's not ruling out a run. She's so pompous and so fucked up. But listen, listen to this shit again. So you can see her face move while she says it. Even your even your allies are pissed. I yeah, mean, some are. You, some do aren't. you ever just you after? Know. Do you just ever want to just lay in bed and say, "Fuck this! I'm getting out." I mean, I am going to go into full seclusion, no. and they're never going to hear from me. It's so despicable to watch Howard Stern play softball with Hillary Clinton. I mean, it's just it, it's just disgusting. Again, no. First of all, um, that would only delight my adversaries, um, so <laughs> I would never do that. But secondly. I have this unique perspective, some of which we've been talking you about do. today. I have a unique perspective. I have a particular understanding of the Russian threat. And it's not going to only be Russia. I mean... So you must be laying awake at I night. I do. I worry a lot. Because you know how, what I, the shenanigans yes, are. Yes, I worry, I worry a lot. You've never- the most frustrating part is that Howard Stern is a very, very smart, skilled guy. He talks four hours a day every day for the last 30 years. He knows what he's doing. He's pitching, he's throwing a softball to Hillary Clinton so she can tap it out of the park. That's what he's doing. Right? No pushback. You say, Hillary Clinton, what, what proof do you have that Russia had anything to do with the fucking election? You cunt. Negotiated with them. You've seen secret intelligence. I have. And you know that, you know, there's these guys who phone, from Nigeria who phone your home and somehow finagle six grand out of you by doing that. Yeah. And you're brilliant at yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine what's going on when Vladimir Putin sits there and plans against the United States. Well, but you know, you can read the, the indictments against the Russians. And I, you know, a lot of people didn't pay attention to it, but it's very uh, informative and scary. Do you mean the Mueller report? Yeah, the yeah. indictments. Okay. The, the report itself, I think, is also worth reading. But if you read the indictments, you know, basically they were like, hey, Let's do everything we can to elect Donald Trump. I mean, that's those, those are quotes. Those are taken, words. They those said. are words yeah. that taken, and they also said Bernie Sanders. But you know, that's another for another day. Do we day. hate Bernie Sanders? Oh God, she's just so disgusting. Such a disgusting smear, right? It's fucking disgusting to even watch her do it. But to watch Bernie, to watch Howard Stern pitch her like that, and um, and have Robin, his his uh, associate, also. Uh, jumping on the bandwagon, yeah, Bernie, oh yeah, it's right in there, it's right in there in indictments. And we've covered it on this show, I covered it 10 times already, with the fake indictments, the indictments of 12 Russians that lead to nowhere. They're probably, they're probably, you know, box, you know, box stackers in Russia. They took their names, they threw them into the mix. It's bull fucking shit. Well, we know that, everybody here knows that. You know that because you're, you're here. What? Do we hate Bernie Sanders? No, I don't hate anybody. Bernie could have endorsed you quicker. Uh, he after could have. You he hurt him. me. There's no doubt about it. He hurt me. But going back to the indictment. How? He ran, he ran around the country uh, uh, campaigning for you. He went to like 38 locations and he got booed because he kept saying your name. Every time he'd say, Bernie Sanders went from, from packing 30,000 seat stadiums. He couldn't draw 100 people when he was talking about Hillary Clinton. That's you, fucking witch lady. That's you could have done something more. What, drop out of a primary that he's winning? That he's being cheated in? Oh, my God. That's right. what's really important. Have you ever spoken to Bernie about that? No, no. You don't I mean, talk to him? I don't talk to him. Yeah, I mean, we did. We- well, Bernie Sanders tells a different story in a minute. He says that she sent him, uh, she sent him a letter saying, thank you so much for your help. Oh, so she's a fucking liar. She's running for president. Finally endorsed me and all that. But Anything. you're upset with him. No, disappointed. Disappointed. Okay. okay. So, and, and I hope he doesn't do it again to whoever gets the nomination. Right. And that's the ultimate smear right there. I hope he doesn't do it again to whoever gets the nomination. As if to dismiss Bernie Sanders and say, uh, you're not going to be the nomination, you nominee. You weren't the nominee the last time and you're not going to be again because I am the fucking queen and I get to pick. So that's disgusting, Hillary Clinton. So, so let's see, Bernie Sanders, half a ball? I don't know. We've got to give him a half a ball on this one. Maybe. I don't know. Listen. Soon enough. She said, he hurt me. There's no doubt about it. And I hope he doesn't do it again to wh- whoever gets the nomination once it's enough. What's your reaction to that? Well, I'm sorry that Hillary Clinton is rerun. Well, yeah, the things that hurt her in the November election uh, was your uh, endorsement didn't come soon enough. She said, he hurt me. There's no doubt about it. And I hope he doesn't do it again to wh- whoever gets the nomination once it's enough. What's your reaction to that? Well, I'm sorry that Hillary Clinton is rerunning 2016. And if I had it on you, I could take out a letter from Hillary Clinton saying, thank you, Bernie, for working so hard 
to try to make me the President of the United States. Let's be clear, in the last, during my efforts to get Hillary Clinton elected and to defeat Donald Trump, I ran to something like 14, 15, 16 states right here in Iowa, okay? I worked as hard as humanly possible. We did dozens and dozens of rallies around this country. Now, what I tried to do after she won the primary is to sit down with her staff, and we did, to create a democratic platform that was as progressive as it could be, and that ended up happening. So, you know, I don't want to rerun 2016. Right now, our goal is to defeat Donald Trump. I think I'm the strongest candidate to do that. If it turns out that I am not the Democratic nominee, I will strongly support anybody else. That was the, the Bernie Sanders just had the most unbelievable opportunity with the cameras running to totally put Hillary Clinton in a place. He could have done, pulled a Trump. Trump would have ran all over that. You have to smear your opponent. You have to crush Hillary Clinton. You can't, I, I don't know, you just can't leave it out there. She called you a Russian agent. She said that you, you, uh, you, you a fucking Russian agent. You interfered in the 2016 election and, and held her back from becoming president when she was a disgusting, corrupt criminal running for the presidency. Say that. Say that. Quid pro quo. Say it, Bernie. Say it. Grab your fucking balls, Bernie, and say it. You fucking God damn it. Can Bernie Sanders win? I don't know, man. It's just he's too nice a guy. Is he just too nice a guy? He's not gonna he, he's not gonna learn. He'll only fight Bernie. He'll only fight Trump. Oh, he fucking Trump. Yeah, he fucking Trump. Oh, Trump. I'm going to fucking punch his, punch his fucking ugly orange head. Fucking Trump. Oh, yeah, big tough Trump. Man. Uh, that's what he'll do. He'll, he's ready for Trump. But you have, to, you have to get over the fucking witch that's standing in front of you. That's the problem. Fucking Bernie. Wake up. Wake up, Bernie. So I don't know what else he says. What else does he say? New job numbers out show that 266. Eh, who cares? So here's a, an interesting uh, take. Uh, so Bernie Sanders is getting blacked out in the media. Uh, this is a Bernie Sanders video. So we're just trying to see. Because, again, it's Bernie or bust. It's either Bernie Sanders runs against Trump and wins or Bernie Sanders gets cheated and Trump wins. That's the only outcome of 2020. That's Conti's prediction right from the beginning, and it's panning out to be true. When you cheat the most liked, per, the liked candidate, now, is it a different dynamic in politics? Uh, is, is, is Bernie Sanders smarter than the rest of us? And he knows that the only way to defeat the Democrats is to not uh, get, get, go down the rabbit hole with them. Each of these rabbit holes, because that was a rabbit hole. Hillary Clinton sets up the rabbit hole and says, come on, Bernie, come down here and, and fight with me like a pig. Right? Get, in the, get in the mud and, and wrestle with the pig. That's what Hillary Clinton's trying to do. Uh, and all the Democrats are trying to do that. Mainstream media is constantly trying to bait him and pig him. So is Bernie Sanders just so smart that he sees that and he's trying to tell us that's not the way to beat the Democrats because if you get into the mud with them, they'll just cheat you overtly. They'll say, oh, see, there's a reason why we should stick the knife in your back. Right? That's what the Democrats do. That's what the Democratic Party does. Right? So I don't know. I don't know. But here's a, here's a uh, interesting uh, clip by the, uh, the Intercept on the Bernie Black Alice. Listen. Bernie Sanders is a presidential candidate since his first run began back in 2015. That's when Donald Trump rallies were getting wall-to-wall -wall coverage. In the middle of this media frenzy awaiting the stage. Donald Trump Donald talking Trump about Obama right now. So let's listen. Go ahead. Trump got 20 times more coverage than Sanders on TV networks during the primaries. And Hillary Clinton got about twice as much airtime. A disparity noted by the New York Times public editor. Are you saying He's that somebody's got their on the thumb left. on the scale at the New York Times for Hillary? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bernie won 13 million votes in 22 states, but to see his rallies live, you often had to dial up C-SPAN. This lack of coverage helped stall Sanders in 2016, but this time around, could the blackout actually help? He's running up against this huge problem, though, that I mentioned earlier of this media blackout. He often either gets ignored or kind of laughed at as not a serious candidate. One thing standing between Sanders and serious coverage in 2020 is the media's belief that he simply can't win. It's just you can't win as a social it's disaster. The monitor's away. I think the risk. Democrat. The guy's a recipe for electoral disaster. And if Sanders can't win, the thinking goes, then it's justified to largely ignore him. 
A recent study reveals that's exactly what MSNBC has done. Bernie Sanders makes my skin crawl. Bernie gets less airtime and more negative mentions than his top rivals. If the media took its coverage cues from polling, Sanders would be treated like a top-tier candidate. In the 25 of the last 25 polls, Bernie Sanders is beating Donald Trump head-to-head -head in every poll out there. You wouldn't know that from reading this New York Times headline. Sanders, who actually beats Trump in three swing states, is not mentioned. And all we're arguing for is, can we have a fair shake? What is the, the heart of the critique about what Sanders calls the corporate media? In about you know, a minute or so, you're going to cut the commercial breaks and you're going to see some pharmaceutical ads. It's incentivizing you and others to make sure that you're asking the questions and driving the conversations in certain areas and not in certain areas. Well, let's take a break because I do it to fit in a commercial. Sure enough, the segment was followed by pharmaceutical ads. Healthier brain meets with Matt. Better life. I was cured. For Bernie's campaign, this blackout amounts to a huge grievance. But the way Sanders is ignored could also be an advantage. A pattern has emerged in presidential primaries. Candidates rise, face media scrutiny, and then they drop in the polls. Remember back to the 2012 Republican primary. You saw it happen to Rick Perry, Herman Cain, and on and on. This time, it's already happened to Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg could be next. But what if the media pretend you're not rising at all? Like when CNN puts Buttigieg and Joe Biden within striking distance of Elizabeth Warren, while ignoring Bernie, the kind of thing that happens all the time. Or when CNN puts Warren ahead in New Hampshire when she's not. Leading the pack in both polls is Elizabeth Warren. Or while MSNBC docks Sanders five points in a poll when he's actually gained five. Bernie Sanders who dropped at least five points. Now when you press reporters on why they don't cover Sanders despite his poll numbers, they'll often say, well, he won't actually stand up under scrutiny. But if Sanders continues to rise in Iowa while the press ignores him, there's a chance he could skip the scrutiny phase and climb right into first without being attacked as a front runner. Let's face it, the corporate media was never going to anoint Bernie Sanders the nominee. Maybe the best he can hope for is that they just stay out of his way. Woo-wee, so there you go. Evidence on the record now of uh, the, the mainstream media cheating Bernie Sanders. You see how they rig the numbers. They flash up fake numbers. Bernie is losing when he's actually winning. Uh, and on and on and on. This, I mean, these, these reporters, even The uh, Intercept, is still leaning on fake polls as if they matter. I say that they don't, they don't matter and they don't mean anything. Uh, they don't mean anything whatsoever, you know. So, uh, so Marcus Conti reporting, America, you have one last chance to uh, get a single-payer, universal single-payer health care system in this country a Green New Deal, get money out of politics, end the counterinsurgency wars, uh, bring jobs back to America, raise the minimum wage, uh, all these fucking things. Right? All the things that Bernie says to bring civility back to government, honesty, get money out of politics, make bribery illegal again, break up the banks, right? The banks are the problem. It tax the, tax the wealthy and give Americans a... Average Americans a break. One in one in seven people still on food stamps. Sixty percent of the country doesn't have four hundred dollars to their name. Eighty percent of the people that have a job are living paycheck to paycheck. America has one last chance. You could smear it as socialism. You could smear it as as uh, free stuff, handouts. I think they stopped with the free stuff idea. That's people are starting to realize. But we are a society of social programs. And to advance social programs that help regular people like dental and eye care and, you know, basic medical needs is not unrealistic, is, is quite human, quite, uh, uh, quite the direction that uh, humanity should be going, especially in a, in a wealthy country like the United States. So, um, so we have one last chance because if not, if Bernie Sanders is, is cheated and loses – Good Lord help us, because because Trump, uh, if you think that they're looting the country now, if you think Bur uh, Trump is and his cronies are fleecing everybody and everything they can, stuff in their pockets, forget about it. If they lose, if they win again, and and there's no reason to run, you know, re-election, they're gonna fleece the shit out of the country, and Trump will very likely run one of his kids for president, probably Ivanka. That's my, my thought. The first woman president could, you know, could in fact be Ivanka. If people are so, you know, gaslighted to believe that Trump did any good whatsoever. So I'm still, I'm still Sanders, you know, you could say what you want. He's still, he's definitely a limp dick. 
He didn't push back on Hillary like he should have. Maybe he's 4D chess. I don't know. People still like him. He's still poll, you know, he's still one of the most, if you do a fair poll, 70% of the uh, 70% approval rating in America, 70% of the country thinks he's the most trustworthy politician of all of them. And you can say, oh, he's just another politician. They're all the same. He's a millionaire. He's, he can't win. He's a Jew. Whatever, right? You're just policy. Policy. That's all that, it, that's all that matters. If you have a guy who stands strong, stands firm on policy from the bully pulpit, using the presidency as a bullhorn to broadcast policy for the people, deflate the billionaires, go after them, tax them. Uh, that's what you got to do. And that's all that fucking matters, really. That is all that matters. That and Wolf Alice. So that's, that's shit. That's all that matters. Oh, there's no one that's no one.